Hi, Crossroad Church. Welcome, everybody, to our Holy Thursday worship service. We're uh, just starting our live stream. If you are jumping in with us, we're going to give it a couple more seconds while other people get online with us. So if you're watching with us live, welcome. If you happen to be watching this after the fact, thank you so much for joining us this Holy Week, worshiping with us. I want to remind you we're going to have an opportunity tomorrow, which is April the 10th, which is Good Friday. We're going to have a prayer service at 12 noon. Uh, on the note. So hope you can join us tomorrow on Good Friday when we remember Jesus' death on the cross and the meaning for us. And also want to invite you to join us for Easter Sunday this year on April 12th. We have two worship services. Both are going to be live streamed. We're going to have a bright and early sunrise service so you can enjoy Easter at home. You can wake up bright and early. You don't have to get dressed in anything fancy. You can just get on Facebook with us. That's, that's at 6.30 in the morning. And then our second worship service it will be at our regular worship time at 10 a.m. Easter Sunday, April 12th. Hope you can join us for that. And we're so glad that you have joined us tonight for Holy Thursday. So on this very, very special night for Christians around the world, this is when we remember when Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room and he prepared to give himself up for us the next day. He, of course, already knew what was coming, but his disciples did not. And on that night, on that special night when they gathered in the upper room, two very, very important things happened in that place. One thing that we all know very well is Holy Communion. This is when Jesus, for the first time, took the Passover meal, the Seder meal, and transformed it and blessed us with the sacrament of Holy Communion. We're going to celebrate that a little bit later as part of our service tonight. The second thing that happened, though, in that place was Jesus washing his disciples' feet. This is when Jesus spoke those famous words, a new command I give you, to love one another as I have loved you. When Jesus put on a servant's towel, took a basin, and washed his disciples' feet. And so tonight, in these crazy days of coronavirus, instead of having a foot washing service, the only way for us to do this together as a church, of course, is to have a hand washing service. And so I wanna invite you right now, if you're, you're jumping in with us, is uh, if you want to go grab a bowl and put some water in it, and then some kind of towel to dry your hands, uh, and have that available, um, I'm gonna invite you in a few minutes to actually uh, wash your hands. If you're watching by yourself, you can do this on your own. If you happen to be watching with other people, uh, there's an opportunity you can actually wash one another's hands. And so grab a bowl of some water in it and a towel. And then if you want to share in Holy Communion with us, uh, grab any form of bread or cracker, any kind of juice or wine, or even just plain old water uh, will do so that you can share Holy Communion with us. So now I want to introduce you to some really special friends of mine who are going to help lead us in worship tonight. So everybody, this is the Posick family. So everybody say hi from where you are. Just wave at them through your screen. And would you guys introduce yourselves? I'm Megan. I'm, I'm in sixth grade. Hello, Megan. I am Dalton, I'm a senior. All right, Dalton. I am Sophie Grace, and I am in 10th grade. Hello, Sophie Grace. I am Lily Beth, and I'm in 4th grade. Hi, Lily Beth. I'm Stacy, and what I'm not in a grade. grade. <laughs> <laughs> I teach them, so. And I'm Lewis. All right. Well, so glad that you guys are helping uh, me tonight. Um, and it's just, I'm sure you guys can see from where you are, it's just, God just blessed us with a beautiful day uh, to worship together. We thought, let's do this outside, uh, so we're here. Out looking, you can see behind us the St. John's River, and you might even be able to see a little bit of the skyline of Jacksonville um, back there uh, as the sun gets ready to set. And this is just the perfect time and the perfect place uh, for us to do this uh, together. So we're going to start, we're going to worship together, and we're going to sing an old worship song that's one of my favorites. It's called Here I Am to Worship. It's very easy to catch on to. If you don't know it, that's okay. You'll catch it right away. Uh, you'll catch on to the melody. And wherever you are, I want to invite you to actually sing with us. Just go ahead and, and do that. So we're going to try this song. The first part says this, light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Let's try that. Light of the world, you step down into dark. Oh, so highly exalted. Let's try that. King of all 
Thank you. All right. So I want to uh, invite you now to prepare to hear from God's Word for us. In the scripture reading, if you happen to have a Bible uh, nearby or you want to look it up later, is uh, we're about to hear Psalm 91. Uh, these words uh, go back uh, many, many years in the history of God's people. These are words that uh, God's people have turned to uh, in times of trouble, uh, in times of danger, uh, and in times of fear, and uh, words have never been truer um, uh, than on a day like today uh, for us. So I want to invite you to, to open not only your ears, but your hearts as well, uh, to hear God's word. Dalton's going to come and read for us now, Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now Sophie Grace is going to come uh, lead us in prayer and she's going to uh, help us to express 
our gratitude and our gratefulness uh, to God tonight. So let's pray together. Sophie, would you lead us? Dear God, our Father, I lift thanks to you for everything that you have provided for us. Thank you for shelter, food, family, and safety. Thank you for giving up your one and only Son as a sacrifice for our sins and forgiving our sins. Thank you for allowing us to come together virtually through technology. Thank you, Lord, for the community that we have. Thank you for our friends and our family. I lift up thanks for teachers, healthcare workers, and their families. I thank you, Lord, for every breath and every moment that you give us. I lift thanks to you, God, and I pray for our families, our country, and our church. Amen. Amen. All right. So, next we're going to have an uh, opportunity to remember uh, Jesus serving his disciples, and we're going to do that uh, through a time of hand washing. And so, for those of you who are watching um, by yourself right now, if you want to go ahead and get your bowl ready in, in the water, or those of you maybe uh, families or friends or roommates or people who might be watching us uh, together, um, the, the way I'd like to ask you to do it if you happen to be watching this with someone else is not to wash your own hands, uh, but if you're with other people, um, I guess I need to back up and add a caveat to that. If you're with other people and are not required to socially distance like this family <laughs> over here, uh, then what I want to invite you to do is to wash one another's hands, um, not, not to wash your own hands. And, and in a second, what I'm going to do is read for us two passages from John chapter 13. When I start reading these scripture verses, then you can go ahead and wash your hands. So let's read together as we wash our hands. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and he took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, well, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not every one of you is clean. After he had washed the disciples' feet, Jesus put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. And a little bit later in that same chapter of John, it says this. Now the human one has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I'm with you for a little while longer. You will look for me. But just as I told the Jewish leaders, I also tell you now, where I'm going, you cannot come. And then Jesus says this, I give you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, so you also must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my, dis my disciples, when you love each other. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. 
So next we're going to have a time of uh, Holy Communion um, together. And so if you have your communion elements nearby, if you want to go ahead and uh, get those ready. And as we prepare to come to the Lord's table uh, together, wherever you might be doing that, whatever setup you're in, whatever elements you might be using, whether you're doing this on your own and you're connecting with us uh, virtually or whether you happen to actually be with other people um, right now, either way, I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit whose power is with you and with us in all of our places that we are connected uh, together. And as we prepare to share Holy Communion, to remember, to taste and see that the Lord is good, we need to stop for a moment and we need to invite God's forgiveness God's mercy, God's grace, to be made new and real uh, for us today. And so to help us do that, uh, Lewis is going to lead us in a, in a prayer of confession. Lewis, would you come? Join me in prayer. Lord, you are omnipotent, omniscient. You are the designer and creator of all I know and all it is. You are God and I am not. Lord, I confess that I am not that I am not perfect, that I am imperfect. You are constant, and I know that you have and will continue to keep all of your promises. You have promised that I will never be tempted beyond what I can bear, but I continue to succumb to temptation. The temptation of greed, the temptation of gluttony, the temptation to place the worries about tomorrow before the needs of others today. I've fallen short, and I beg your forgiveness. Lord, you have promised to provide all that we need, and yet we worry. You provide us guidance through scripture and tradition, and yet we stray off the path you place before us. You offer the Holy Spirit as an advocate, and yet so often we lean on our own understanding. You call us to be perfect, even as you, our Father, are perfect, but we fall so short. You are God, and we are not. We have all sinned and fallen short of your glory, God, and yet you love us. You love us enough to bridge the chasm of our sin and allow us to be in relationship with you. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you for your Son. You are God and we are not. Help us as we aim for perfection, knowing that we will always fall short. I place all of my trust in you, Lord. You are a refuge in time of troubles, and we are in a time of trouble. You have stated that we should not be anxious, but present our request to you through prayer and petition, and your peace that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds. That is what I ask today. Be our refuge in this time of trouble and allow your peace to settle upon us. You are God and we are not. You are perfect and yet you love us who are not. Your love endures forever. We place our trust in you and are amazed by your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so now with the words that Lewis just prayed for us, helping to kind of set the stage, I want to invite you wherever you are, if you would just take a moment now, connect with God. You can close your eyes. You can leave your eyes open. But I just want to give you kind of a long moment to silently, uh, in your own way, confess to God now any sins that you need to confess uh, to the one who loves you the most and the best. Let's do that now. My brothers and sisters, hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So now, let's remember how on the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room, they celebrated the Passover meal, the Seder meal together. Except during the meal, Jesus transformed this experience. He took something very ordinary, ordinary bread, ordinary wine, and transform them into something extraordinary. This, after all, is the definition of a sacrament, a sacred moment, a sacred experience for us of God's grace and presence in our lives. And so during the meal, the way that it happened, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. And then he took the cup, he gave thanks for it, offered it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And whenever you do this, as often as you do it, remember me. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, would you make these elements tonight, the bread, the cup, 
be for us the body and blood of Christ. We pray, Holy Spirit, that even in these days of social distancing, you would close the spiritual distance between us and God so that we could be one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world around us, that you would send us out as the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus Christ. We pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I want to invite you, if you would join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And I want to invite you to go ahead and take and eat, and take and drink. so great uh, to worship uh, together tonight. Posick family, Lily Beth, Megan, Sophie Grace, Dalton, <laughs> Stacy, Lewis. Wow, there's a lot of you. Yes. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank and you Mimi. so much and for your help. Over there. Mimi is rocking it. And she's helping. She's our key grip and helping <laughs> from the back of the scenes. My friend Hudson's here with us. My friend Wade's here uh, with us tonight helping out. And of course, all of you guys joining us online. Uh, thank you so much. So tomorrow, Good Friday at noon, uh, please join us for our prayer service. Uh, we'll be live, and then on Easter Sunday, our sunrise service will be live streamed at 6:30 in the morning, and then our worship service, our, our Easter worship celebration, will be at 10 a.m. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful night. Good night. <laughs>